哦,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好,我家吃不好
And then it says, and so the order in the Tibetan is a bit different, but it says here, um, next, Mahamudra cannot be explained or it cannot be shown. And so that is that the nature of Mahamudra is not an, like an outer object of investigation that can be understood like an object, um, but it is um, a nature that belongs to the, the sphere of the mind. Tomatis, Forbearing intelligent Naropa, forbearing of suffering, you <coughs> undertake hardships. Um, so it is that in order to realize this nature, one must possess great endurance or a patience. Um, and understanding its preciousness, the preciousness of this nature, one must, with patience or um, endurance, be able to undertake many hardships. Uh, so one must make a great effort to understand this nature. And now, um, ordinary beings um, cannot uh, see this nature. It says um, we, are, um, we are kind of lost in um, this worldly life. We cannot see it because we only, uh, we, what, all that we are concerned about are the affairs of this very lifetime. We are not thinking about past and future lives. And just like, like ants running around busily, day and night we, we engage in all sorts of worldly activities. So basically it is because it is due to our attachment to this life that we are unable to see this nature. <laughs> Kadi um, so it says, look closely at worldly phenomena, they are unable to last, they are like dreams and illusions. Uh, so actually, um, this is what, um, what ordinary beings do not see, that the concerns of this life, this entire life, is like a dream or like an illusion. It is because we are attached to this life that we cannot see this. But in reality, in this entire lifetime is exactly the same as the dream that we have in just one night. And when this dream begins is when the, the bardo consciousness, the mental form of, of bardo consciousness enters the womb of our mothers. <coughs> and from that moment of conception until the day one dies, this is the one night dream of this life. And to our perceptions, it may appear as a hundred, hundreds of years, a very long time. Um, but the very moment you wake up from this dream, that is when you die, this entire life is instantly gone, just like last night's dream. It all has disappeared. And then what will um, continue to manifest is the reflections, the projections of one's own afflictive emotions, appearing, um, manifesting as various experiences of happiness and suffering and so on. And so um, all of this life will be um, gone, um, which is just like a dream. And this is what ordinary people do not know. And um, so um, it says, therefore, 
Um, that being so, having given rise to disenchantment, drop worldly activities. So what this is saying is that do not only be concerned about this life. And then, having cut all connections with attachment and aversion, the domain of samsara and so on, um, so it is that the, the mind itself is in its natural state Buddha nature. And this nature is like pure water. It is primordially awakened, actually. It is only that uh, due to this temporary perception of there being um, division between self and other, due to this dualistic perception, we give rise to various thoughts of attachment and aversion, and we hold these ideas and our perceptions to be true, and um, therefore um, no, we continuously give rise to various um, coarse and subtle forms of affliction. So in the more coarse form, we, um, we develop attachment, hatred, and so on. And the more subtle versions of these are hope and fears. Um, but basically, all the afflictions really are included within either having an attachment or an aversion. And that is what obscures the mind. Um, so um, it says that you know, cut the um, connections with attachment and aversion and practice alone. It is that you know, in, um, you know, with the mind being obscured, which is like, like murky water, like muddy water, uh, we cannot see uh, now how things really are. For instance, our enemies and our friends are uncertain, even from a relative perspective. It is uncertain who is really our friends and our enemies, and it is, um, it is changeable. So understand the, the, the fleeting nature of all these relations. <laughs> Same so it says cultivate practice alone in mountain and forest wilds. Um, so it's, um, it says you should seclude yourself to an isolated place and practice there. And <clears throat> so what this really refers to is not necessarily a physical place of isolation, but what really must isolate, be isolated, is the mind. And the, is the mind must isolate itself from thinking, from grasping its various habitual tendencies. And the practice in isolation means to, to rest within um, a state that is free of grasping at any thoughts whatsoever. Um, and actually, if you sustain such a state, wherever you go will be like a mountain hermitage. Um, so being in isolation means to remain within um, a natural state of non-meditation that is free of thinking. Um, and then when you, re when you rest within a thought-free state, then awareness can see itself. Then awareness is clear. 
Um, and that itself then uh, is seen as the natural state of the mind. So when you see, when awareness sees itself, there is a clear knowing capacity that knows, that is fully aware of the absence of all thoughts. It knows of its empty nature. And that is what we refer to as this unity of clarity and emptiness. It is clear because it knows its empty nature. Um, so that is um, the clarity and emptiness. And that itself is the nature of the mind and nothing else. It is that mind that is free of all thinking and that knows its own nature. And it is nothing else. That is the natural state of mind. Nanka and then it says, so remain in a state of non-meditation when you have attained that which is without attainment, Mahamudra has been attained. Uh, so that is when you, when you attain, when you see that the mind is empty like space, then you have attained Mahamudra and that is the attainment of the state of enlightenment. You have attained the highest attainment um, by attaining that which uh, is without attainment actually. And that is the nature um, of space. The mind, um, space actually has many qualities. Um, that is for instance, it is unobstructed, all penetrating. It is beyond birth and death and so on. So um, finally, what is attained when attaining Mahamudra is to understand that the mind is like space by nature. And then it says worldly affairs are meaningless causes of ill being. So then um, seeing that one recognizes that um, although in samsaric existence there is an appearance of duality of self and others, and that is based on forms. But within the mind itself, there is no such a duality, no division. And therefore, um, whatever form or appearance becomes manifest, then is seen as just like an illusion or like a dream. <laughs> And then it says, as actions performed are without essence, look at the actual true essence. And that is, um, that no, no matter how developed uh, this world might become, and no matter how hard we might work to improve um, things in this life, it all actually has no real essence. It is just like a dream. Um, even if we encounter some temporary happiness, well-being. On the ultimate level, all of that is illusory by nature. And so that is once one has understood that there um, is no duality of um, like anyone, again, self and others and so on, then everything that appears as happiness and suffering and so on is seen as like an empty illusion. So on the, on the ultimate level, then one attains this illusion-like um, samadhi, perceiving the illusory nature of everything that appears and exists. <laughs> Uh, 
ランクマトワタランクタマチョコでえ、てりとんとさじゃちゅうたんにて、え、いちちとくよまれ。そんなよ。え、ロチュがたたたじにうさんでれてれ。てちゃんてたとくとんまとこれ、とんとてすんばれ
you will recognize whatever thought and feeling of attachment and aversion and so on arises within your mind. And clearly recognizing it, you're able to let these thoughts go. So Rigpa is awareness of um, what arises in the mind, recognizing whatever thoughts and feelings arise within the mind. So first we must recognize the various feelings of attachment, aversion and so on arising in our mind and then we must let them go so that not even a trace of that feeling is left behind. And then put the solid water of thoughts into its natural clarity without blocking or producing appearances, leave them as they are. Uh, so <clears throat> what this is uh, saying is that uh, do whatever thought and feeling arises in your mind, um, let it go, do not hold on to it. And um, practicing in this way again and again, when if you do not hold on to whatever arises in your mind, the mind will then remain naturally clear. And when the mind is um, very clear, then there is no need to block um, or produce any appearances. And so um, here there is a slight difference to be made though between um, beginning practitioners and those who have attained a certain degree of clarity. In the beginning it is, it is necessary to <coughs> practice some blocking and some producing because in the beginning we do need to let go um, of the um, afflictive emotions and we need to produce and you know, develop the like, positive emotions of love and compassion and so on. So in the beginning um, that is necessary, but then later on when you have attained some stability in sustaining a clear um, state of awareness, at this point then there is no need to um, accept or reject whatever arises in the mind. That is, there is no need to deliberately um, produce um, a positive thought and there is also no need to be afraid of negative thoughts. One has an ability to let, um, let be whatever arises, whatever it may be. So there is a slight difference in terms on um, how much like, stability and clarity we have already attained. <laughs> Gumbanyan,你们都把它都把它收起来，这样我们家这个人怕错了，这这就是啥叫？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是啥？这个是
And then um, it says, when there is nothing to be rejected or adopted, mind is released into Mahamudra. And so that is then when we gain experience in meditation, in letting go of these thoughts. Uh, so we gain experience in, for example, letting go of um, a very powerful emotion, a negative emotion. Um, so it arises, um, you recognize it, you meditate, uh, you let it go, it becomes liberated. And when it becomes liberated, when it becomes released, then um, what remains is Mahamudra. And then there is a direct perception and experience of Mahamudra, which is um, a pristine experience of, of clarity. And there is no um, feeling, no trace of affliction left behind, no feeling whatsoever. And that is then finally when awareness has attained stability and is at all times sustained. But in order to get there, it is necessary to practice many times, over and over again, every time a thought and an emotion arises. You need to recognize each and every mental arising. And finally, when you, when you see um, its essence, the essence of these um, arisings in the mind, then it is said you have understood the root of all phenomena. Um, so it is like um, if a, the root of a tree with lush branches, leaves and petals is cut, it's 10,000 branches and 100,000 leaves wither. And then even the darkness amassed over a thousand kalpas is dispelled by a single lamp. Uh, so, for example, um, even if darkness has lasted for many um, aeons, for thousands of aeons, um, since beginningless time in samsara, what has caused this, um, this darkness is the um, habitual um, concept of a self and other um, duality. And due to this perception, we have habituated to um, thinking in ways of attachment and aversion and so on. Um, and uh, when you recognize that where it all arises from, which is this perception of a self, and in this way are able to let go of whatever arises, it is just like um, you cut the root of a tree or you illuminate the, the darkness um, in an instant. Um, so it is when, uh, when you recognize that self and others do not actually exist um, separately, in that very instant, the darkness of a thousand aeons has been dispelled. Um, so what we call this um, darkness or uh, negativity and obscurations mm -hmm. amassed throughout kalpas is nothing else but this concept of a self. And it all arises from this idea. And when that idea um, dissolves, and then there is only emptiness and all negativities have dissolved. And you directly experience Mahamudra. You see the Buddha directly. And then um, what needs to be done is to sustain that state. Um, so actually it is something that happens in just an instant. It is that in the Manjushri Namasam Giti, that in an instant you are um, a Buddha, in the next moment you are a sentient being wandering in samsara. Um, so it is um, just the question of um, the turn of an instant of recognition.